This is the biggest week for Maryland basketball recruiting in a while. You are Locked On Terps, your daily podcast on the Maryland Terps. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, everyone? I'm Trey Moore, host of Locked On Terps, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, and also video content creator for 247 Sports and InsideMarylandSports.com. Com. And today's episode is brought to you by Jace Medical. Empower yourself when you purchase a Jace case, providing you with personal supply of five antibiotics that treat 50 plus infections. Get yours today at jacemedical.com. That's J A S E medical.com. This is the biggest week for Maryland basketball recruiting in forever. One of the biggest weeks of Maryland basketball recruiting that we've had ever, I'm going to say. And in case you're wondering, and in case you don't know why it's such a big week this week, this coming week, and on what's going to happen these next couple of days, Derek Queen is coming to town. I'll say it again. Derek Queen is coming to town. I know most of you Terp fans are familiar with Derek Queen and how good he's been and his rating as a player and all the good things people say about him. But for those of you who don't know, Derek Queen will be one of the biggest recruitments, one of the best recruitments, one of the highest rated recruits that we will ever receive, that we that will ever have committed to Maryland in terms of basketball. And we have had some big time recruits over the year, whether it was Jalen Smith, who was the top 15 player in the nation and was a five star, or whether it was Diamond Stone not too long ago, if you remember those times with Diamond Stone, or whether it was Mellow Trimble, who was a huge time recruit, personally my favorite Maryland basketball player of all time, whether it was one of those guys, or whether it was a smaller guy like a Kevin Herter, who was still a four star recruit, or a guy like last class in the 2023 class, like Deshaun Harris Smith. Derek Queen has a chance to be the biggest recruitment, maybe out of all of those guys. You could argue between him and Jalen Smith and Diamond Stone, but in terms of right now, he will be our biggest recruitment we have had to Maryland basketball in a while, and he is visiting the Terps this week. Queen has been crystal ball to the Maryland Terrapins for a while now, on almost every recruiting website you look at, he's been crystal ball to the Terps. For as long as I remember, as soon as it was in there and, as, and I became familiar with Derek Queen and who he was, he had been crystal ball to the Maryland Terrapins. And if you don't know, he goes to Mount Verde, who's which is one of the top schools, one of the top basketball schools in the country in Florida. But he's actually from the Baltimore area. He um, attended St. Francis early on when he was a couple years ago when he was a freshman. So he hasn't always been at Mount Verde, but he's recently started there and he's doing really well there. He's starting for them. They have a bunch of good players, but he starts, he plays really well for that team. They're a really well coached team. And you know, multiple NBA players have come out of Mount Verde, whether it's Ben Simmons or a bunch of other guys that have come out of Mount Verde that are really good players. So it's a basketball factory. There's a ton of NBA players. If you look it up, there'll be multiple names on the list, but overall, Derek Queen is a five-star top 20 player in the nation. 247 has them pretty high. They have him ranked as the 12th ranked player in the 2024 class. And why is it so important for us to get this guy? And why is it the biggest week of Maryland basketball recruiting? It's the combination of his status of being a five-star and Everybody wanting him, and of course the Terps want a five-star because of how awesome those type of players are in college bas basketball. One of those can really change your team around. One of those can make your team a contender, make your team a consistent March Madness team. And 
for and if especially if they're not a one and done guy and they're not leaving after a year, those guys can turn out to be three to four year players that are overall can really change your program and can start from freshman year and contribute right away. But it's also extremely important because we don't have anyone in the Maryland 2024 basketball class, which is super surprising after what we have done in the past, especially last year with having a top 20 class last year with three four-star guys. And we got Deshaun Harris-Smith who, and we got Jonathan Lamo and we got Jamie Kaiser. We were able to put together a really solid class of three four-star players that are all going to be impact players down the road and all have a chance to play this year. I expect Jamie Kaiser and Deshaun Harris Smith to start. I expect Deshaun Harris Smith and Jamie Kaiser to compete for Big Ten Freshman of the Year. But Jonathan has been underrated. Jonathan is a really good player. He could put in some big minutes this year off the bench for the Maryland Terrapins. I think he'll be in the rotation. So after the point is after how well that class went last year with Kevin Willard's first class. Now we're looking at an empty room in the 2024 class. You're saying, oh, we missed out on Jaden Mustaf, Mustaf, whose dad actually played for the Terps, who was a four-star guy that committed to Virginia Tech. We just recently missed out on Matthew Hodge, who at first a lot of people predicted he would go to Maryland, but he switched to Villanova. He's a four-star guy. So we missed out on two four-star guys that a lot of people thought we could have got. And now we're looking at an empty room in the 2024 class. So even if Derek Queen was not quite the same status of player that he is right now, if even if he wasn't known as a five-star and he wasn't a top 15 player in the country, according to multiple recruiting websites, even if he wasn't that type of player, we would still look at Derek Queen and say, we need to land this guy because we don't have any 2024 commits yet. And I don't know realistically who else exactly is out there that we could get that would come into the 2024 class. But I think if we land their queen, I think it's all okay. I think we look at the Maryland 2024 class as a success if we land their queen. No matter what happens with the rest of the class, if we get anybody else or what not or what happens with it, I think if we land Derek Queen, a five-star player of that status, that's going to probably be a McDonald's All-American that I don't think is a one-and-done player. I think he's a three-, four-, maybe two-year college player that will stick around and really be able to take on and change this Maryland program. Or We're in a really good spot. I don't want to say change this program around, but keep on propelling this program forward because if we land Derek Queen after the class we just had – and then the way that Kevin Willard can use the transfer portal, especially if we don't fill out this 2024 class, it's going to be a bright future for the Maryland Terrapins to pair Deshaun Harris-Smith together with Dare Queen and Jamie Kaiser shooting. And we'll see what else the team looks like next year. I'm mostly excited about this year right now, this year's team. But it's going to be pretty cool to see what happens if we land Derek Queen. So all will be okay if we land Derek Queen, but he visits this week. I want to make sure I emphasize that. So it's extremely important. The Terps, um, the Terps coaching staff has gone all over. They've continued to fly down to Mount Bird to go on and check on him. Um, I was watching a Team Thrill game online, which is his circuit team. Um, Team Thrill's actually from Baltimore. Like I said, he's from Baltimore. So they're an Under Armour circuit team in AAU. So that's his AAU team that he plays for in the summer. And I, I turned on a game just to see his game and see what type of player he was on YouTube because it was just on there and I was interested. And I see Mike Jones, the new Maryland, part of the Maryland coaching staff and a new new part of the staff who came from Virginia Tech, who's going to be a huge part of the recruiting overall. He was also the head coach of the math a couple of years, so he knows the DMV area really well. But I turn on the game just on YouTube, and I see Mike Jones sitting watching Derek Queen play um, for a team thrill on just a random summer circuit game that I was watching. So I know the Maryland Terrapins coaching staff is all over him. I know they're trying to land him. And right now, we're the favorite. We're expected to land him. But this weekend, 
I think is going to be the decision maker. This is going to be whether we lock it up and he might uh, might commit sometime soon or maybe he doesn't like it as much as he thought and it gets a little murky and we're looking at it like, oh no, he might not like this and the crystal balls get taken away. So this is a huge weekend for the Tarps recruiting and I hope they're ready. And then the one last point is Julian Reese, our current power forward center, big man. He might be gone to the NBA next year. I don't know. I hope and pray selfishly he comes back. But if he's gone, we're going to need someone to fill that void in the post scoring, a big man scoring. We're going to need someone in that pick and roll game. We're going to need someone that can put up points from that position that's really talented. And that's exactly what Derek Queen is overall. So I think it's extremely important for us this week to land Derek Queen and to be able to recruit him. Do I have a problem with the Terps play calling? I'll tell you about that after this message from FanDuel and Jace Medical. Everyone should be empowered to take care of themselves and their loved ones during the unexpected. That's why Jace Medical offers the Jace case. The Jace case provides five life-saving antibiotics for emergency use and gives you peace of mind so that you are not just hoping that you have access to medication in an emergency. Jace Medical makes sure you have medication in hand. Jace Medical is simple. They handle everything from the online evaluation to licensed pharmacy medication delivery and ongoing consultation and care. Don't get caught unprepared. Save more than 360 by getting these life-saving antibiotics with Jace Medical, plus an additional $20 off by using Locked On College at checkout on jacemedical.com. That's J-A-S-E medical.com, promo code Locked On. Snap into action this NFL season with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place $5 bets. That's $200 in bonus bets, win or lose. If you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. The app is easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, the official partner of the NFL. The Terps play calling has a problem. After these last couple of weeks, I've touched on it in segments over these past couple of days. But after these past couple of weeks against Ohio State and against Illinois last week, I'm going to say we have a small play calling issue. It's not every down. It's not every play. It's not quite on a consistent basis, I would say. But for me, I have a problem with the play calling in terms of on big downs, in terms of fourth downs, in terms of when we need it at the end of the halves or at the end of the games, our on fourth downs. I have problems with the play calling currently. And I'm going to go back and give you guys the exact spots where I think Josh Gaddis and Mike Loxley need to come together and have a discussion and say, we can't do this like this anymore. We can't do this this way against Ohio State, or we can't do this against anybody. We can't do this against Illinois. We can't call this play here in this situation. We can't take the ball out of our best player's hand and our, in our strength of our team in this position. Let's talk about the couple examples that are obvious that everyone knows about. The Illinois game, the third and sixth run, you cannot tell me there's not a problem with the play calling with back-to-back weeks and play calls where you have to have it and play calls that I don't think you have to overcomplicate it. They come up short with something that you would expect a last from Josh Gaddis and the coaching staff. On third and six, we're driving down the field. We're down by three. We want seven. We have plenty of time to get seven. We don't want to tie it. Who knows what can happen? Teams drive down all the time on game-winning drives. It's third and six, and we take the hands out of the best player on our team, maybe the best Maryland quarterback of all time, top 10 in, in passing yards in the Big Ten, the leader of Maryland passing yards ever, the leader in Maryland passing touchdowns ever. 
could be a first, second team, all big time, maybe a first team. I doubt it. It's probably going to JJ at Michigan, but could be a second team, all big time player, a top 25 quarterback in the country on third and six. We take the hands out of that guy, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, and we hand it off to Antoine Littleton. I have multiple problems with this play call. The strength of our team and the strength of our offense over the past couple of weeks over this year has been the passing game. It's been what we leaned on, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later if that's a problem to me, but that's been what we leaned on. Our wide receiver room is the strength of our team. The quarterback is the backbone of our team, and on the third and six, the experience that Talia has drawn and how long he's been in college football, in no way I am calling a run there on the third and six and giving it off to Antoine Littleton. And this is my problem with the run. You usually run it there at a certain point in the game if you're going to go for it no matter what on the fourth down. But that's not where we were at. It wasn't like if we got three yards, I don't think we would have gone for it. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think we would have kicked it even if it was fourth and one. So you usually run the ball there if you're planning on using two downs. So that wasn't the right time, in my opinion. You guys in the comments let me know if I'm wrong. But in my opinion, that wasn't the right time to run the ball. You run the ball there when you have two downs to get the first. They talk about that all the time on broadcast. I'm sure you guys heard it. Oh, they might run the ball here because they're kind of in that weird range where they don't really want to field though they can't really kick a field goal but they can't really punt so they'll run it here on third and five to see if they can pick up the first or they can pick up three or four yards and make it fourth and one okay maybe that was the goal of it I don't know but I don't think we would have gone for it if it was fourth and one or fourth and two because at that point we were down by three and I think we would have just chosen to tie the game so to take the hand to take the game out of Talia hands is just beyond me I think it's a horrible call especially with the talent on our wide receiver room especially with Jay Sean Jones in the slot and Caden Prate throughout outside and how well Ty Felton has played at times I can't see a world where that is not a problem that is absolutely a problem with the play calling and Josh Gaddis there and then we look back at the Ohio State game The Billy Edwards draw on the fourth and one, I don't really have a problem with Billy Edwards coming into the game on fourth and one, but the play call was just so obvious and predictable that I knew it was coming, so I knew Ohio State knew it was coming. They put Billy Edwards in shotgun, and they had nobody behind him. There was no running back. Um, It was an empty backfield with just a quarterback, and it was so obviously going to be a quarterback draw. Maybe there I wouldn't have mind a trick play where instead of drawing it, they throw it out on a quick pass or something. But even there, it's like, do we really want Billy Edwards throwing the ball after he's not played a single snap in the game? Not really. So I would have preferred to see a sneak with Billy Edwards, get him under center and sneak it. I would have preferred to even just have Talia in the game and hand it off rather than having to Antoine Littleton, who was playing really well in that game, rather than having a really predictable Billy Edwards draw on fourth and one when it was pretty obvious you were putting him in there to run the ball. If you put him under center, I think it's a little bit better. If that plays on third down, maybe I can kind of feel it out a little bit more and see it and have – and be feel better about it but overall in the fourth and one it was just so predictable so there's two really huge key parts of the season i think the fourth and six could be a or the yeah the fourth the third and six excuse me could be an absolute season changer type of play call i think talia can Definitely pick up that third and six there. And it's showing now we don't kind of trust him with that play calling. And that could have easily, if we throw the ball there, I'm not saying we win the game, but there is a huge, 
there's a much better chance that we can win that game if we throw the ball there. We definitely have a chance to pick it up and go ahead and down the field and score there. If we throw the ball with Talia there, it just bothers me that we don't have trust in Talia. There's been a bunch of other stuff. I think we also get too past happy at times. I know we haven't been able to run the ball awesome at times, but sometimes we're so pass happy and we depend on it so much that that's also predictable and teams are able to shoot up the field with their pass rushers. I've seen it. They're not worried about the run game at times. And I think part of that is on Josh Gaddis for not staying balanced. If you know what I'm saying on the defensive line, they're just be able to the edges is able to shoot up the field and not worry about the run game and not worrying about having to defend the run game at all. I think there's problems with that. I also had a problem with the Mike Loxley, um, the Mike Loxley onside kick. So I think there's been many different problems for the Terps play calling that absolutely need to be fixed. If we have third and six again in that type of situation. I almost guarantee we keep the hands in our best players' hands and give Talia in our wide receiver room, who's been pretty awesome at times. They've slowed down a little bit over the last couple of weeks, but they've been pretty awesome at times. I think I'm almost guarantee we keep the hands in Talia, to keep the ball in Talia's hands, and I think Josh Gallus will fix that. But right now, I think we have a little bit of a play calling issue with the imbalance overall of how we pass the ball too much, and then in certain situations, we want to go away from that identity of passing the ball and instead run the ball on third and six when we haven't been a running team all year. And especially the fact that Antoine Littleton's in the game, except for um, – and Roman Hemby's not in the game there. I think that's also a problem with the play calling. You want Antoine Littleton in the short yardage. We don't want Antoine Littleton in for a third and six carry. But that's what I would say. There is definitely a problem right now with Josh Gaddis in the offensive play calling. It's not a huge problem. It's not a down-to-down basis problem. But there is a problem that needs to be fixed. Do the Terps injuries affect the Illinois game? Coach Loxley thinks not. I'll tell you my opinion after this ad from eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience is what brings home the winning trophy. It also is what keeps you ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for with eBay Guaranteed Fit. Your part is guaranteed fit to your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive ebaymotors.com eligible items only exclusions apply ebay guaranteed fit only available to u.s customers did the terps injuries against illinois affect the game for the maryland terrapins yes they did they absolutely affected the game when you want when you saw the injury list before the illinois game I said to myself, this is going to be a test for the Maryland Terrapins because multiple players were out. Dante Trader, one of the best safeties. He's been playing like one of the best safeties in the Big Ten, I think. He's been playing awesome. Had an awesome game against Ohio State. Him and Bo Braid are both NFL caliber players. Corey Deitches, our starting tight end. An awesome receiver threat for Talia. One of the best tight ends in the Big Ten. A matchup nightmare that if you don't have the game plan around him, then it's a lot easier to stop this Maryland passing attack without Corey Dicherson with. And then Corey Bullock, starting starting offensive lineman for the Maryland Terrapin, who's been playing pretty good. It hurt not having him. And then Tar Heap still, our best corner, one of the best corners and also in the Big Ten, a huge part of our secondary, was out for the last couple of games, and he was out for Illinois. But Loxley didn't seem didn't think that the injury should have affected the game. He says 
you know long enough I don't care about injuries. Injuries are going to be part of the game. It's the reason why we come in here and you guys ask me or all these guys are playing. That's why we play a lot of players. We play a physical sport called football, and the injuries are part of the game, and we have to do what the recruited and guys that go in. As I said, our standard doesn't change between first player, second team player, third team player. We've had to create enough debt, which I feel like we have. But now we've got to get those guys to execute and play where they're capable of. So overall, this quote is kind of saying that it's not exactly that he doesn't think the injuries affected the game, but that they shouldn't have affected the game, that we expect players to step up. But I'm going to tell you that the injuries absolutely affected this game. Not having Dante Trader, not having Corey Deitches, not having Tarheeb still. If you've seen, our secondary has gotten a lot worse since it was the first half of the season where I was like, it's one of the best secondaries in the Big Ten. Now we see them getting beat over the top to an Illinois wide receiver room. And it wasn't even Isaiah White Williams always beating us over the top. It was other players in the Illinois wide receiver room that I said I wasn't concerned about. Because I honestly thought Tarheep still was playing. But not having Tarheep still out there really hurts. Our secondary is clearly taking a step back. Um, we're giving up big plays in the passing game, like I said. And then also not having Dante Trader in the back end. It really hurt us. And then Corey Dytus, I think, he adds an extra dynamic that defensive coordinators have to game plan for that is really hard to do with the wide receiver room that we have. And with him at tight end, he brings – a different kind of trait in speed. He's not the tallest guy, but he brings a certain mismatch that it's really hard overall for defensive coordinators to game plan around him. So not having Corey Deitches was a big deal. And at the end of the day, you can't make an excuse like Coach Loxley said, but I'm here not as a coach. I'm here from a fan perspective, and I'm going to tell you it made a difference overall. Because it shifts everything around on the defensive side of the ball. Corey Coley has to come in and start. And we know he struggled at times overall. And then Glendon Miller has to move up to safety and away from the slot. Instead of having Dante Trader there and having him be able to operate the slot and do some big things that he's done overall. So I do think it has an impact. I know Glendon Miller has played well. He's had interceptions. He's made a bunch of different plays, but he's also done that from the slot. And I love having Dante in the back end and having Glendon Miller up up top in the cornerback in that role. But I think in having a starting offensive lineman out against Illinois, I think if we have half of those guys, I think if we have just Star Heap still, I think we win that game. I think it's as small as – not as small as that. It's a whole player. But it's that type of injury that can really set the difference between I'm looking at us having an elite type of game or them stopping us. But that's all we have for today. Please like and subscribe. We'll be here tomorrow talking about Maryland Terrapins, and we'll be here during the bye week, the football bye week. We'll be getting into a lot of basketball starting up. We'll be talking about a lot more basketball tomorrow too. So make sure you like and subscribe for that. But thank you for listening to Locked on Terps.